I should probably do a follow up because I realized I didn't cover one subject that was probably the most important point that I should have made in that video. It was one is that I don't have absolute proof. I have circumstances and factors that point to a very likely result, at least in my mind. Um, guy, these uh, ancestry has a ton of records, but the only thing that's really going to prove this out is DNA testing. And I'm going to go over what happens when DNA testing takes place and or digging through county records if the records still exist. And what, what happens to DNA testing, what it means, and et cetera, et cetera, what the cost is and how it has to be done. So, not any uh, descendant of um, Monroe Lewis or even Robert Lewis, if that could, if the people could arrive at that result, uh, sorry, Randolph Lewis can arrive at that result, can can take a DNA test and come up with what we want. And unfortunately, the the most practical DNA test really can only be done by male descendants direct line male descendants uh, from um, you know by the father the last name is passed down by the father you know it doesn't the last name doesn't have to be you know someone could have been you know the son of Charles Wilborn Lewis and adopted and took the name Wilson but if they know that and they have documentation for it then they could you know take the they call it a test but they could basically have some DNA um, you could take a swab, send the DNA up to the lab, and the lab will come up with a result with a bunch of numbers. And on its own, it doesn't mean anything, doesn't help you, but uh, if, if you're able to take that DNA uh, result with all the numbers, the different parts of the DNA, they, they test and assign a number to for however they come to that. I, I don't clearly know the chemical process, but I do know the result is they give you a bunch of numbers. And what those numbers really amount to is almost like a safe combination uh, that DNA-wise spells the last name, <laughs> right? So if we find a male line descendant of Monroe Lewis of Paducah, Kentucky, and he takes a DNA test, and if his DNA test is compared with a known and documented descendant of um, Meriwether Lewis or because uh, Meriwether Lewis is, of course, a descendant of um, one of these earlier Lewises, I think maybe Charles Lewis Sr. Any one of these Lewises from this Lewis family, uh, they, you know, that included Augustine Warner and Charles Lilburn Lewis and all those people, um, <coughs> my theory would be proven wrong if the DNA didn't match up but it would have more weight if the DNA did match up. Now, there's variations in these, uh, there's very little mutation between one generation to the next, and I guess I, the best way to just go over this is, is to do the example of how it applied to uh, my Burgess family. So, <clears throat> my Burgess fam my grandfather's name is Donald Burgess Chichester, and his mother was uh, Hattie Burgess, uh, and she was the daughter of, you know, some guy named William Everington Burgess, and he was the son of a guy named Benjamin Burgess, and we can get all the way back to William Everington Burgess and census records, and we rely on the local biographies that came out of Kenosha County. There were actually two companies that came in there, interviewed the farmers, and called them the leading men of the county and they wrote down where they had come from and the names of their children and when they when they had died. Now the story for the family for ben, Benjamin Burgess, the father of William Everington, is he was married twice, first to Rebecca Chase, secondly to Amanda Foster. And he ended up dying building a, 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 a grist mill in the Pike River after the family had come over uncovered wagons from from uh, Hoosick, Rensselaer County, New York. And those stories are basically, the story up to that point 
Although they don't get the Hoosick, Rensselaer County, New York right. They just say they came from Vermont, come from those biographies. And all those facts are reinforced by every every record that we've ever found. And it feels, it's reinforcing, It's there's no doubt in my mind that that's absolutely true. And the next thing I have no doubt in my mind is that his father's name was Benege Burgess. And they, they mentioned his name is Benega but from Vermont. Well, there was a Benedict Burgess that died at Hoosick, Rensselaer County, New York, and I've seen his will, and it mentions his son Benjamin, but the problem is, how do I know that that Benjamin that went to Kenosha County is the same uh, Benjamin for a man who died in New York? Well, the reason why I know that is because Benedict's brother John died and mentions uh, when he went through probate, for his will, to prove the will, they had to get his brother back from New York to go to court to prove the will. Okay, so we get that far. But then it's been asserted that, okay, so Benija basically shows up in one of these earlier censuses in a, a place called Sterling Wyndham County, Connecticut, who the absolute atlas of Burgess research for my line that I go back from anywhere from John Burgess forward, a man named Bob Heck had found. It was a very tough find, but I could see it. It's Benija living next door to, to John Burgess, who is said to be his father. And the documentation from John Burgess going all the way back to Thomas Burgess the Pilgrim is absolutely solid. So it only left a little bit of room for doubt that, well, they were maybe they're just neighbors, but how do we know they were related? So my cousin George Burgess, who is related through my great grandmother, we got him a DNA test, and uh, he got his numbers back. And there's a Burgess DNA project up there, and each of the participants say who it is they're able to document their descent from with certainty all the way back. We we say Benija. And some of them say Thomas Burgess, the pilgrim. Well, there is like 11 of them that are already participated. And we got Georges in there. And, and in, fa in fact, between all 12 or maybe 15 sets, I don't remember the exact number, it was in the teens, Georges was more common to all of them than any, any one of them. On a, on a, I think it was like a 30 marker test. It was, it wasn't the full test, but it was pretty, pretty deep. And there's just no way. Yeah, after 30 markers, now you say, oh well, you know, maybe Wilson has, and this is the way the markers look. By the way, you know, 13, 12, 14, 10, 14, 14. You know, stuff like like a safe combo. And well, I can assure you that the one that George got back doesn't have 13, 25, 14, 11. You know. And stuff like that. Now, to me, some of these things are obvious mutations. You can see that there's, um, but but those differences help you know what line you've gone down, right? So there's three people that descend from this guy, the planter John Lewis, uh, born around 1715, and they got 13, 25, 14, 11, and then 11 14. Yeah, it's a little a little different. Not exactly the same in every single thing. And then there's this one for Northumberland. Okay, you go down the line, you get the idea. Now with different last names, it's going to be a lot more different than that. But with this, now we have a big enough pool of people, right? And, and the, the, the numbers don't change that much from father to son. There is some change over time to help you differentiate. That's what makes it so useful. But not enough to say, well, how do we know? Everybody's got the same numbers, so what good is it? <laughs> there is some differentiation, and there's enough even between common named families that you can tell which line you're from. And so what we want to do is we want to get two DNA tests, and what those DNA and we match up with a descendant of from these Lewis family, this Lewis family that came out of um, and we might even be able to tell by looking at this this chart, which um, now, some of these people are just asserting too early as to to what, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm gonna go over, um, but somewhere in here we're gonna find the um, the Lewis that we're that we're looking for, and we're gonna hope we're gonna get that number. And if we do, then we know 
that he did go to DeKalb County, and the, and the whole explanation makes sense. This is proven, and even though we're missing records, we have this, and that, that would do an awful lot for us. Um, so, like, here is a Thomas Jefferson Lewis, but they're, God, they're going with Lewis of Wales. Now, uh, let me tell you this. As you can see from the presentations that I've done, each generation you go back, there's a risk that something could go wrong with the records. And things, you know, that's it. You made an error, and it's you're no longer studying your family. And to make claims like, oh, yeah, I, do, I can trace my ancestry all back to all the way back to like 500 AD in Wales for some of these Welsh princesses prince and princesses it's a little risky to do now in my family supposedly I can do that but I have no proof that Zilpha Madison married Benedja Burgess I know Zilpha married Benedja but I don't know if Zilpha Madison did so I can't say that I know Zilpha Madison's a descendant of Henry Madison, who married Judea Weaver, and by his marriage to Judea Weaver is a descendant of Clement Weaver, and then by whatever works the, the Weaver genealogy guy did to get him back to, you know, some king of some little portion of Wales back in the 500s or whatever by some stone column standing up in Wales, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's somewhere in there something's probably going to go wrong. So I don't know why some people are, are claiming that their haplotype is goes all the way back to to the 500s, but nonetheless. Okay, so I'm done with that little part. But what I'm saying is, is don't don't take my video to say that absolutely by 100% fact we know for sure that um, that all the all the family there's a good chance, but that the family there. Are, that settled in, you know, McCracken County for sure, absolutely, without a doubt, 100%. There's no doubt about it. If we're descended from Jefferson, we're not there yet. Uh, we're at a point where it's pretty likely, um, only because the uniqueness of the name Randolph Lewis, and only so. And, um,. <laughs> You know that's that, that, that that's the first time I've ever used that approach, but it works. Um, I've used it kind of similarly with the Leet family, but until we get a DNA test that's going to match us up with uh, a descendant of Meriwether Lewis or people that the documentation could be you can trace back to without any problem, and you can see that there's maybe only one or two deviations on the thirty or so set of numbers on these DNA tests, you're not going to know. So I know there's a Jim Lewis that was interested. He's helping out with the Starns. I may be able to get in touch with him and try to encourage him to take a DNA test and tell him what the situation is. Um, and also, I may... And then uh, we just got to hope we can find somewhere that somewhere that someone that has already taken a DNA test and can trace his line back to... Um, Oh my God, here's a James A. Lewis, but they're claiming Ireland of Kentucky. But, I, you know, I don't know. Um, anyway, i, I got to stop. I don't want to run into space, and I've said enough.